move on to our final topic. And this has been some news that came over the last couple of days as well. Um, I thought I'd get your thoughts on it because not a lot of people are talking about it yet because it's not official by any means. But the rumblings are that for November, we're going to be getting Shakur Stevenson versus Jamel Herron. And I really like this fight. I'm really high on Shakur Stevenson, but I do feel like he's gone a little bit too long now without a real serious opponent. Um, and I feel like Jamel Herring is coming at the right time for him. I feel a bit sorry for Jamel Herring because he had his had his world title win and it felt like his big moment and he had to wait around a long time for Carl Frampton. That fight was pretty much all on Carl Frampton's terms, to be honest. He literally played the waiting game just for Carl. Gets a really good win over him and probably deserved a Valdez unification type fight, but now has to take on Shakur Stevenson, who... By all accounts, they're good friends. They've been around each other a lot over the years, so he will know what a tough task Shakur Stevenson is. And although I really like this fight for Shakur Stevenson, I think as fans, it won't be the most fun to watch because I think ultimately they might cancel each other out a little bit. Shakur yeah. does have a tendency to sort of really focus on not getting hit sometimes and doesn't care enough about his offence. And you might really see that against a better fighter like Herring. But quite intrigued to see this, quite intrigued to see all the personalities involved. I've seen Michaela Meyer and Terence Crawford sort of saying no comment when asked to to give their thoughts on the matchup because they're obviously involved in it. But a good matchup for both men. What are your thoughts, Michael? Yeah, Jamel Herring is one of my favorite human beings in boxing. I, I yeah. love Jamel. He's just a super great guy. We're both former United States Marines, so we've we've bond on that. But um, just just a wonderful human being, awesome family. I'm not supposed to root for anybody, but he's one of those guys that yeah. I root for. He it, it <laughs> just it's impossible not to. So uh, I, I do feel bad because I, I know that he wanted, and they were originally talking about maybe him and Oscar Valdez doing a unification fight on September 11th. You know that was a possibility, and uh, with him being a former Marine, like that angle that would have been pretty cool. But uh, Valdez has a fight right now. And so that's not going to work out. If you're, if you're top rank, I think they would like to see this order of operations because if Shakur Stevenson beats Herring, well, then you have the two young budding stars in Valdez and, and Stevenson that you could do next. And that would be a unification between two young guys. And you win either way if you're top rank with that one, right? Um, with Jamel Herring, He's got plenty of experience he's going to bring in here. Um, he's been around with everybody. Training with Bud Crawford and, and Bo Mack and that whole team there has been wonderful for him. He's going to bring all that in against Stevenson, but Stevenson just has that. There's just some raw talent there. And I think that there's a chance that Jamel wins the first half of that fight. Shakur does some learning on the job, pulls it out late. There's even a chance for some scorecards that fans – find questionable but i the problem with this matchup it's not going to be a very scintillating fight it's just not jamel is going to try to bring the heat a little bit but not he's not going to go full blast um and stevenson it, it is just more about compu box you know just making guys miss and, and pot shotting here or there and i think you're going to get a 12 round 116 112 115 113 kind of win for stevenson yeah i agree that. Yeah, I agree. I think the two two southpaws, two lefties, they can cancel each other out sometimes. Yeah. And I think this is one of those fights where that will happen. Um, I think Jamel Herring, obviously, is absolutely huge for that weight. Sometimes I see him in pictures with welterweights and light middleweights and think, how on earth do you make 130 pounds? But I think he'll, he'll have to be big in there and make Shakur feel like the smaller man. But yeah, ultimately, Shakur's another one in that Jaron Ennis category for me that I see as sort of almost generational. I think he's a really special mm -hmm. talent. And like you say, I think it's uh, it sort of aligns perfectly for top rank next year to make that big unification fight. A bit disappointing for Valdez off the back of Burchelt that he's having to take on Cohen Chow, I feel, because I feel like it's one of those fights that for him is probably quite hard to get up for. Cohen Chow has not quite looked the same fighter as he was in the amateurs. Um, I felt he got lucky en route to a gold medal in Rio as well, but yeah. ultimately he probably deserves a, a bit of a lighter touch after such a big win against Burchelt that not a lot of people saw coming, but hopefully this can align perfectly for next year, right? Yeah, I think that's that's what they're building. You know, with, with top rank versus other promoters, one thing to always remember with top rank, they always play the long game. They always play the long game. So I think they see things stacking up next year for that big showdown. And who knows, may, maybe Valdez and Stevenson fight two or three times. You know, you could have something like that. And I think, like, style-wise, that will be a fantastic fight because Valdez is going to come right at Stevenson. 
Yeah, absolutely. And with Tank moving up as well and unlikely to return to 130, those two guys will fight out for the best in the division undoubtedly as well, which mm-hmm. will which will be very nice. So that wraps up our topics for today, Michael. Thank you for joining me. Just before we go, do you want to let people know where they can find you if they want to check out any of your stuff? Yeah, well, uh, I'm on all the social media. My uh, handle is Montero on Boxing. You can go to ringtv.com and look for all my work there. Check out my podcast every Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern time, The Neutral Corner. That's where you can catch the live video. That's on Ring Magazine's YouTube channel. Or you can check out the audio version on podcast platforms around the world. Just look for Montero Unboxing, The Neutral Corner. Cool. Nice one. I will be leaving links down below as well, guys, so you can find them on there and everything. Make sure to go over and subscribe. And like I say, if you've come from Michael's pages, welcome, and I hope you stick around for more stuff. But thanks for joining me, Michael, and I'll catch everyone next time on Between Rounds. Have a good night, brother.